Hi, I'm Roger Mitek, founder of Prudhomme Beer Certification, and I, along with Brand Concepts, would love to share our thoughts on glassware for beer with you. This topic is near and dear to me, and it still boggles my mind how many people simply deny the impact of glassware on our beer drinking experience. Since the overall experience is critical, we need to understand the nuances of a variety of different glass styles and shapes on the aromatics, flavors, and overall impression of beer. Before we get into glass shapes, it's always important to explore the history of glass. We often believe that glassware is a modern invention, but we can actually trace the evolution of glass back to Mesopotamia approximately 4,000 years ago. Back then, glass, which is made from silica found in sand, would have been opaque. But in the 8th century, we were blessed with transparent glass for the very first time. In 1674, George Ravenscroft created the first lead glass production. Lead glass is more brilliant in appearance, is easier to work with, and provides the beautiful ting we hear when struck. Glass bottles were typically always hand blown until 1903 when Michael Owens created automatic glass blowing equipment, which could produce an amazing 2,500 bottles per hour. In 1950, Alistair Pilkington created the float glass process, which produces high quality, distortion-free glass, which floats in a molten tin. Now, let's take a look at some glass shapes. It's very important to have the glass shape that works well with the beer inside. Lagers typically have fewer aromas and flavors than other beers, and we need a glass shape that will enhance our appreciation. A proper stemmed glass, of course, has a stemmed hole that keeps our hand away from the glass and therefore does not allow a transfer of heat from our hands to the beer and helps to keep it cold and refreshing. It needs to be narrow and tall. Narrow to increase the activity of carbon dioxide. This will keep the foam intact and also will provide a more sparkling, refreshing mouthfeel. It should be sloped inward at the mouth. The narrow opening brings the delicate aromas in tight for us to appreciate and also reduces the impact of the atmosphere on the foam, thereby maintaining the head longer. The altitude glass is prototypical for loggers. It is tall and narrow, has a tapered mouth, and the heavy base is ideal for inviting your hand to rest at the bottom where the least amount of beer is. The Linnea glass is also perfect for a lager, but this one needs a beer with a touch more malt presence. More bready or fruit notes can be realized because of the outward taper of the mouth. Tall and narrow, it still enhances drinkability and refreshing characteristics. The only issue with this glass when used in hospitality is they can easily tip over when placed in a glass washer and could break other glasses. The Frankfurt Stein is different than other mugs or steins. This one is very tall and narrow. The mouth on this glass is only six and a half centimeters wide, whereas a normal stein might be approximately nine centimeters wide. Once again, the tall narrow body allow for more CO2 to be active, creating a tight foam head and a refreshing characteristic. The handle keeps your hand away from the beer, and just in case you want to hold it by the base, check out the beveled and raised edges at the bottom. These multi-leveled areas keep your hand from warming up the beer. This is a very stable glass because of its weight and larger base. The flared Pilsner is brilliant for a lager with more malt-forward characteristics, or even possibly newer lager styles with hop-forward notes. Think about beers like Helles or Czech Pilsners with their bready notes. A beer with a little bit more complexity will thrive in this glass. The wider mouth will drive a sweeter note from the beer, thereby reducing the perceived bitterness. Clearly, the narrow base helps to activate carbonation and keeps the foam thriving, but you need a beer with 100% malt to endure the wider opening. Anything with adjunct will quickly dissipate. This Viking glass is very similar to another style called the Servoise. Again, the stem helps to keep the beer cold, but in this case, the wider body and waist help to slow down CO2 and therefore bring out more mouthfeel and sweetness in a beer. It does taper up and in, helping to preserve the foam. Consider using a beer with more caramel notes or even a dark lager. The Prague is an interesting glass that can be used for a variety of different beers depending on what the drinker wants from an experience. 
The narrow but lower waist encourages the drinker's hand to rest at the bottom, warming the beer up. This brings out more flavor and body and encourages a deeper, more complex experience. The shoulders or top section of the glass are wider again, dissipating carbonation and creating a softer mouthfeel and more flavor. The mouth does taper inward, keeping the head intact and focusing the aromas. The wheat beer glass or Weizen glass is brilliant in design. Germans typically say Prosit by clinking the bottom of the glass together. In this case, the base is very heavy and thick and makes a resounding sound. Clinking the bottom also helps to disturb the carbonation. A very narrow base dramatically increases the carbonation levels, but creates a potential problem when pouring. If you are not gentle and careful, the beer will explode into foam. The narrow waist further drives the refreshing and effervescent body of the beer. The shoulders open up a little, providing more opportunity for the fruity and spicy notes to flourish in addition to the more bready notes of the malts. In some cases, the mouth is tapered in to keep the foam completely intact. This is a very diverse glass that we seldom see in market. A multi-dimensional glass, while it is tall and narrow at the waist, it also has a mouth that presents a variety of flavors and aromatics. The broader base allows for a softer approach with more emphasis on mouthfeel than carbonation. The narrow midsection invites your hand to rest there, warming the beer up considerably. The outward taper at the top creates more opportunity for malt forward beers to excel. You could choose to put an amber lager or amber ale such as a honey brown and truly savor the great beer. The shaker glass may be the most widely used glass in the industry, but it is not one of my favorites. It does have benefits for bigger bodied beers, but its shape is a negative for lagers or lighter beers. The heavy base is comforting to hold and its weight and shape make it easy to use for bars and restaurants. Unfortunately, its shape makes it easy to stack, which we all know is a bad thing for beer. The wider shape of this glass from the base to the mouth makes it perfect again for malt forward beers that want to emphasize the caramel, nutty, or roasted overtones. We don't really see the dimpled mug very often anymore, but this British ale staple is still widely recognized as a great glass for bitters or British pale ales. Big and broad, it discourages effervescence and encourages a soft, gentle mouthfeel, perfect for lower carbonated beers or even nitro beers. The handle and dimpled outer are great to keep your beer at the right temperature and the wide mouth encourages sipping and more flavors. This is hands down the best glass for IPAs. The narrow base creates a tighter space and more active carbonation, which in turn becomes more thirst quenching and less bitter. The multiple different shapes in the glass structure at the bottom create more surface area and keeps the CO2 bouncing and thereby creates an everlasting foam collar. The raised bumps also keep your hand away from the glass and keeps the IPA nice and cold. The wider waist brings out more of the malt sweetness in the beer and lessens the impact of the bitterness. And finally, the tapered mouth keeps the aromas tight and focused for the drinker and also keeps the foam intact. Now, we are getting into goblets or chalices. These kind of glasses are uniquely positioned for high alcohol beers or beers that have been bottle conditioned. The stem in this case invites the drinker to wrap their hand around the bowl, not hold the stem. This in turn warms up the beer and brings it to the temperature where more of the complex flavors and aromas become present. The rounded bowl slows down carbonation and reduces harshness. This provides a much softer, well-rounded experience. The neck does tighten up a touch and then the mouth flares out. It makes it very easy to sip and the tighter neck keeps the head intact. Remember, as the beer warms up, alcohol can dissipate quicker and this can reduce the overall intensity of this kind of beer. Belgian, again, is designed for higher alcohol beers or even more complex beers like porters, stouts, and imperial stouts. The bowl allows the drinker to warm the beer up and bring out more of the complex flavors. This tulip glass is also sometimes called a hurricane glass or a poco grande. It is ideal for strong beers. Trappist styles or box are well presented in the tulip. The open mouth brings the nose of the beer to life while the round body allows you to warm it up, intensifying those wonderful flavors. 
It is also a good glass for fruit beers if you want less refreshing and more deeper fruit flavors. Snifters are great glasses for specialty beers. The short stem invites the drinker to envelop the glass, bringing up the temperature of the beer. This will create a fuller taste and allow the body of the beer to be fully appreciated. A sloped lip on the top of the glass keeps the foam intact and focuses the aromas.